Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today we're going to be talking about quality of service, QoS introduction. So when we talk about quality of service, basically what this is doing is this is prioritizing traffic on your network based on what type of protocol it is, right? So if you're going out and you're dealing with your network, uh, what you're going to realize is that some network protocols need much more care and feeding, you know, tender love and attention than other network protocols. So if you're dealing with FTP or SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol or File Transfer Protocol, frankly, those protocols you can kick the snot out of, right? Basically, you know, latency doesn't matter a whole lot, you know, basically packets, all that kind of stuff. You can just beat the snot out of those kinds of protocols and it's not going to really matter. On the other hand, if you start dealing with a real-time media protocol, RTMP, or any of the other RTC, real-time communication protocols, those those need a lot of a lot of care. They need a lot of attention, right? Because they there there's issues with things like latency, speed, uh, the rest of it. Um, so if you're sitting there and you're doing a voice over IP uh, call, you need to make sure that the, the 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 that your voice, that your traffic is getting from you to the other part uh, person as quickly and as reliably as possible. So when you're having a call, it is very important uh, that you don't have delays. Right, because if you're having a call and all of a sudden there there's a delay uh, for for the communication for like half a second, a second, two seconds, that can cause a lot of problems. Well. Realistically, if you're dealing with SMTP or FTP or any of those other protocols, it, it doesn't really matter, right? If you're sending a, a file from point A to point B and it takes an extra second, do you really care? Are you really even going to notice? Even if it takes an extra 10 seconds, are you really, really going to notice? Like, I, I bet you, if it takes an extra 10 seconds to, to, to move a file from, from computer A to computer B, you might sit there and you might be thinking, huh, that seems like it's taking a little, and then it's done. And then you forget about it, right? Because it doesn't really matter. It's, it's FTP. If, if email, you know, it takes an extra couple of seconds to come in. Does it matter? No. You don't care. It's SMTP. On the other hand, if you're having a voice over IP conversation and you ask a question and it takes 10 seconds for the other person to respond, um, you are going to be having a lot of issues, right? So the, the thing is now with with, uh, with modern networks, uh, with so many of these networks, people moving around, large files, all those kind of things, is that if you treated all uh, network protocols equally, uh, the whole concept behind network neutrality as far as ISP is concerned, you, you, you treated all network pro uh, protocols completely equally, you would run into a lot of issues. Because if FTP was competing with RTMP, uh, the real-time media protocol, you might run into problems where uh, the, the network simply doesn't have enough bandwidth for everything to, to, to be be, be sent uh, well at the same time. So what you can do is you can use quality of service and what quality of service does is it prioritizes traffic. So it says RTMP has a highest priority and FTP has a lowest priority. So if you have a 10 megabit per second in, uh, connection or a gigabit per second connection and you have all this traffic going by, basically all of that real all that real time communication uh, traffic will be given the highest priority. So it will be put in the express lanes and FTP, SMTP, SNM, MP, all of those other protocols where it doesn't really matter will get put in the slow lanes. So what, what happens then is then uh, if you're doing real-time communications, you don't notice when the entire uh, when your entire bandwidth gets saturated because you're given priority. Basically, the only people that are affected is all those other lower level protocols. It really doesn't matter. So this is the entire point of quality of service. The entire point of quality of service is be able to prioritize the traffic on your network. Because let's face it, it would be completely and utterly stupid to not prioritize traffic on a network. Um, again, this is one of the reasons when it comes to things like network neutrality. Um, I am not a fan of network neutrality as it is spelled out by most people because I think it's just stupid. Um, of, of, of course, BitTorrent should have the lowest level priority and voice over IP traffic should have the highest level priority. Treating all packets the same is stupid. <laughs> it's not even ridiculous. It's just like 
stupid, right? And so what quality of service allows us to do is it allows us to prioritize traffic on our internal network and also when it goes out to the internet from our network just to make sure that there aren't weird problems that occur uh, whenever uh, all of our bandwidth is being used. Because again, if you have old like Cisco switches, you know, 10, 100 switches or even gigabit switches, uh, if people start moving large files back and forth, if you don't have quality of service of some sort, uh, you may start running into issues with these, these real-time communication protocols because all of that bandwidth will be used up. Now, before we get into the class, uh, we do have to talk about our sponsors for a moment. Remember, sponsors are what helps pay the bills um, and, you know, makes me friends and all that kind of stuff in the tech world. Uh, you guys ask how you can help me. And again, you do not have to give me a thumbs up. You do not have to subscribe. You do not have to leave a comment. But if you could go below and click on the links for the sponsors, that... That is something that would actually be very, very useful. So our first sponsor today is Schooly Mitchell. Schooly Mitchell's purpose is to increase clients' profit by reducing telecom costs using software and process at no risk. We only share savings. So if you're looking to purchase telecom or datacom services, definitely take a look at schoolymitchell.com. They can help you. Spiceworks. Spiceworks, our, our, our first sponsor from way back when, the best online community for IT professionals to help solve your tech problems. So if you have any of these troubleshooting issues, you keep trying to email me, don't email me. Go to community.spiceworks.com, ask there, and they will be able to help you out. And finally, Gilware Data Recovery and Backup Solutions. Gilware's partner programs help computer repair and IT professionals make money by offering data recovery and backup services to their customers. So if you run like an IT computer repair shop, if you are a consultancy, um, and you want to be able to offer a higher level of data recovery services to your clients, take a look at gilware.com. Using their partners program, you can uh, you can uh, work out something with them to make everybody happy. So again, those are our sponsors. Please take a look at them because they they make me happy. They make you happy. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we're just we're just, we're just gonna leave that for a sec. Because like I, I was gonna come up with some witty thing to say there, and I think anything I would say would come off incredibly wrong. So, anyways, so let's go into this. So, what is QoS? So, QoS is quality of service, and basically, as I said before, the entire point of quality of service is to prioritize network traffic. Right? Some network traffic is more important than other network traffic. Now, I know I kind of get a lot of noobs out there, and they're gonna scream, and they're gonna bitch, and they're gonna moan because that's what noobs do, but it's just a fundamental, simple reality. FTP, as a protocol, you can beat the ever-loving crap out of FTP, and it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter, right? You can just, just beat on FTP, and, and your files will get sent from your computer to the server, from the server to your computer, and again, even if there's delays, even if there are issues with the network connections, you're probably not gonna notice unless they're really major. On the other hand, again, voice over IP traffic, uh, real-time video traffic, those types of things, uh, streaming traffic, uh, they're very sensitive uh, to, to problems on the network. If you start beating the hell out of voice over IP traffic, um, it's gonna turn into a mess of a phone call. That's just not gonna be a good thing. Why this is more important nowadays is, is back in the day, we didn't really have to worry about quality of service, uh, mainly because uh, back in the day, uh, the, the only things that were running on our, our, our TCP IP Ethernet network were, were basically these very robust uh, protocols. So, so again, FTP, S, simple network management protocol, simple mail transfer protocol, uh, SMB, uh, server message blocks, right, for, um, for, uh, for Windows file transfer, right? So back in the day, those were the types of protocols that we used um, on our network. And so you didn't really have to worry about quality of service because all, all the protocols that were being used were rel relatively robust. It didn't ra really matter if you beat the snot out of them. Basically, you clicked on a link or you, you went to download or upload and when it finished, it finished. You didn't really think about it. But something has been happening over the past 15 years called convergence, right? So back in the day, you had your computer network uh, and then you had your telephone network, which was entirely different. You had a PBX, uh, you had a, a, a voicemail system that you 
used a CAT3 cable, not CAT5 cable. It was his own little world. It was analog and digital systems, not TCP IP. Then you also had like your video surveillance systems. Those were over here. Everything was separate. Now, uh, the individual servers, like your PBX for your telephone system or your DVR for your surveillance system, that may be able to connect into the network. So that itself may have a network connection. But all of the individual devices were on their own network. Uh, so if there was, if somebody was downloading a lot of files from the internet, it simply did not affect the telephone, it didn't affect telephone calls because it was an entirely different system, right? If something was going on with the telephones or the video system, it didn't affect anything else. Well, we've been going through this whole process of convergence. So the idea of convergence is now all of these different devices use the exact same network. So your network with switches and routers and computers also now have voice over IP telephones. They also had the digital surveillance system. So all of these different types of traffic are now using the same network. And the problem is, is that these different types of network uh, 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 traffic require different care uh, by, on the part of the network. Again, voice over IP traffic needs to be very reliable. It needs to be very fast, whereas FTP traffic eh, isn't so much. So what quality of service does is it allows you to prioritize the different traffic. So so certain uh, traffic has priority over, uh, uh, over other traffic, so everything goes fast. So again, uh, basically, you know, why you use quality of service is to make sure all your real-time communication protocols um, have higher priority than these, these lower level uh, protocols. Now, for the most part, for the most part, what you do have to realize is that a lot of times quality of service doesn't get used a lot. So again, when you start thinking about things like quality of service, you may be, be thinking, well, Eli, you know, I, 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 we've got gigabit connections in, in our network. You know, we, all of our switches are gig switches. All of our, all of our computers are hardwired gig. You know, why does something like quality of service matter? Because that's, that's really the, the real solution for getting away from quality of service is just getting a really good network. Well, the reason is, is especially in a business environment, is the number one problem you're always going to have in any kind of business environment is stupid users. No matter what you do, you're going to end up with stupid users. And unfortunately, things happen every once in a while, right? Like somehow it's not supposed to happen, but all of a sudden your one of your stupid users is going to bring your lap to their laptop in and somehow that thing is going to try to back up two terabytes of video files to the servers, right? They're going to connect and then some weird ass script that somebody created two years ago is going to try to do a backup routine to make sure their computer is backed up, even though that shouldn't even happen. And now all of a sudden you have, you have that computer that is now trying to back up all of its video files to the server over your gig connection. Now, if you have that going on with one person, maybe two people, maybe three people, all of a sudden they start trying to use a lot of utilization for a stupid one-off reason. This is not something that's happening all the time. It's not like you're, you're bouncing around 4K video files all the time. But again, if you're in an environment with 20 people or 50 people, 100 people or 1,000 people, believe me, you, you put 100 people in a room four people, four or five people are going to be doing something stupid with a network at any one time. And so the problem is, is although that you should have more than enough bandwidth for all the normal traffic and all the normal voice over IP stuff, there's going to be that point when the network gets saturated because somebody does something stupid. And the thing is, somebody's always going to do something stupid. So if you have quality of service turned on for your network, when those stupid events happen, at least it's not going to shut off the phone lines. Because again, phones are important nowadays. If you have your sales department, if you have your customer support department, if you have your CEOs trying to have a conversation, you know, what if the CEO is on the phone with the debt collection company trying to solve the debt problem so that he doesn't have to fire, file chapter 11 for the company, and all of a sudden, right at that time, one of the users decides to back up their entire two bytes, two terabytes of movie files to the server. Right? That's a real kind of thing. So if you have quality of service turned on, what will happen is when that, those two terabytes of data start getting moved from, from the client computer to the server computer, there are going to be overall network issues that will start to occur so that the systems administrator, the network person, will need to go and figure out what's going on. But what won't happen is that those all those telephone calls will basically get shut off uh, because all of the bandwidth is being used. So that's why you use um, quality of service and why it's important. 
Now we start talking about quality of service. Um, you know, people start thinking, well, this is a solution. Hallelujah, praise, praise the spaghetti monster. We now have quality of service. And you go and you're going to think, you know, hey, quality of service sounds really good. So all we need to do to fix all the problems on our network is we need to go in and we need to institute quality of service across the board on the network, and that will solve all of our problems. You know, voice over IP traffic will now get priority, right? So it'll have more priority than FTP traffic and everything will be solved. Well, the first thing to realize with quality of service, the important thing, and again, one of those things that people miss a lot, is that quality of service doesn't actually increase bandwidth. Quality of service simply uh, prioritizes traffic. So one of the issues you get into, especially with the real-time communication protocols, is a lot of them have started to use a lot of bandwidth. <laughs> Right? You know, like with uh, with Skype now, I, I can do uh, high definition video calls. So you know, if you're if you're looking at simply audio calls for voice over IP traffic, eh, that doesn't require a lot. You know, I don't know, five, uh, 50 kilobits per second, 120 kilobits per second. Uh, it's not too much. You know, voice calls, it's not too much. But when you start doing things like video calls, you can end up starting to use a, a lot of bandwidth. Or if you simply have a lot of people uh, doing voice over IP traffic on your network. Again, let's say you're, you're out there and you have the, these crappy old 10-100 Cisco switches. And they've been working fine for years. And then, you know, you give the CEO or you give a couple of people uh, voice over IP phones, and that seems to be working fine, right? Again, 100 kilobits per second for a voice over IP phone, eh, that seems good, right? Well, again, one of the issues that comes in is what happens if you, if you uh, create a new sales department and now you have, you know, 20 people using the phones all the time or 30 people using the phones all the time, right? Now that starts to add up to more and more and more traffic so that even if you do have prioritization, right, your, your pipe is still only so big. So one of the big problems you run into with quality of service um, is that it doesn't actually increase the bandwidth. And so a lot of people get really lazy. They institute quality of service and they're like, yep, yeah, I'm done. But again, as more and more uh, of these real-time communication protocols are being used, you can still run out of space. The other issue that you run into, especially using something like quality of service, is again, what happens if, uh, if one of these high-priority protocols goes spastic? Yeah, right. You're using RTMP, you're using SIP, you're using some of the, one of these other protocols. And what happens if that just starts using a massive amount of bandwidth, right? That, that type of thing can happen, especially if you do not intelligently build your network. Um, so, you know, what happens if somebody starts, uh, connects to like a 4k or eight, think about this, and this really can happen. What happens if one of your users connects to an 8k live video stream that uses RTMP? If RTMP has the highest level priority, then that means their traffic will get the highest level priority. But I mean, a 4K uh, full-fledged stream is 25 megabits per second. So let's say an 8K is around 40 megabits per second. All that being used, and you're using, like, say, a, a 10100 Cisco switch, that's not, a, that, that, that's not a lot left for everything else on the network. So one of the problems you run into with quality of service is quality of service can sometimes be used by lazy people or it can be used as a way to try to not upgrade the network equipment or the network services that you currently have. And again, it can be a Band-Aid, um, but you, you still run into that problem if you, if you have a limited resource. I would argue with quality of service, if you're going to be using quality of service, quality of service should be used for, again, for the stupid users. Quality of service, I do not believe, should be used um, as something that is necessary all the time, as in this is, this is going to be used all the time in order to really manage the traffic and make sure everything is fine. I would argue it's for that 10% that of the time where users are doing stupid, there's a massive migration going on, there's some reason, there's a lot of data moving back and forth in the network for a limited amount of time, and therefore you have QoS in there to get you over those bumps. Right, it gets you over the bump and you keep going. If your network utilization, you know, you're pegged out at like 90% network utilization all the time, and then you use QoS because you need that in order for any of the voice over IP traffic to work, that that is um, not something that I would personally do. 
Now, if you start thinking about um, QoS, uh, you know, we start talking about the problems with quality of service, then the question is, is what are the quality of service alternatives, right? Because quality of service, again, like I say, it's something to get you over road bumps uh, when your network gets overutilized for some reason. It's not something that I would argue uh, you should use all the time. So the first thing that you should be thinking about, if you're looking at quality of service, is if you're hearing me talk about quality of service and you're thinking about your network and you're like, quality of service is what we need, the first thing I would say is, well, maybe not, <laughs> maybe not. It should get you over the road bumps. The first thing you should be th thinking about is if quality of service seems like something that you do need, right, is that maybe it is time to upgrade your equipment and your services. So if you have old 10-100 equipment, maybe it's time to upgrade to the gigabit equipment. Go out there, buy some good Cisco or Netweir, Net, uh, Netgear gig switches. Um, and again, give yourself far more bandwidth so that you don't run into these issues. That is one of the things to be thinking about. Because again, I mean, one of the, you know, when you start dealing with networking equipment, the, pro the problem with networking equipment is it actually functions so well. The problem with Cisco equipment is that it's so good, right? If you have a 10100 switch from 2002, it's probably tr trucking along just fine right now. Yeah, I know all the Cisco people out there, you'll be like, well, what you need to do is. Then again, I'm not saying from the Cisco best practices standpoint that it's the best piece of equipment out there. I'm saying from the end user who doesn't really want to spend another thousand dollars on a switch, it's probably working just fine. So one of the problems you get in with networking equipment, especially once you get to enterprise grade equipment, is most of this stuff doesn't break. It just keeps going and going and going and going and going. And I've talked about that before when I was a consultant, having to do things like rip out hubs. Like I would go in and I'd work on somebody's network and the network was just dog slow and I couldn't figure out why. And the reason was is they had a 10 year old hub on their network. And again, this was way back when. And the funny part was like, there has never been a time in my career where hubs were considered good equipment. They were always obsolete. But on their network, somebody had installed the hub 10 years previously, and functionally, the hub kept doing what the hub was supposed to do, right? The hub did not break. The hub was still working, but time moved on. <laughs> it's still slow as not. It wasn't, you know, that's the thing, it, is it wasn't that the hub stopped working, is it was that the hub became obsolete while it was still on the network. And that, that's one thing to be thinking about with your equipment, is how much of your equipment is functionally obsolete. It still does the work, theoretically, but functionally it's obsolete. 10-100 networking gear. Again, if you're dealing with quality of service, especially especially with wireless devices, are you using new wireless? A lot of people installed, you know, 802.11g networking equipment years ago, and now the standard is 802.11ac. You know, installing new equipment, or if you install equipment, even 802.11ac into an environment, um, and more and more users are now in that environment, do you need to get a MIMO, uh, multiple in, multiple out, get, get a 802.11ac wireless access point that has more antenna on it uh, in order to be able to deal with more users. Um, those are the types of things that you have to be thinking about with your networking equipment. Because again, networking equipment is one of those things. You turn it on, you put it in the closet, it starts collecting dust, and it's really easy to forget about. And so a lot of the issues that you may be having is it's just simply time to upgrade this, that stuff. The same is true with your networking services. Um, again, you go for your datacom services, Schooly Mitchell, one of our sponsors, you give them a call. But you know, you need to, um, a lot of people buy datacom services um, and then they keep paying for the exact same thing they had five or 10 years ago. I mean, you, I can't tell you how many people still had uh, T1 lines, you know, five years after there were many better options. You know, 1.5 megabit per second T1 lines. And everybody's like, Eli, and that, that would be the thing. I would go into offices and be like, okay, so so things are running slow. How's your network? You know, what, what ISP do you have? And they'd be like, I have a T1 line. And you look at them, you go, you know, that's only 1.5 megabits per second. You know, that's that's that that's actually really, really kind of crappy. You can go over to Fios or something else. And like now, like Fios, I think in our area, you can get up to 500 megabits per second. 
So think about that. You know, if you're running into quality of service issues, you're running into to issues with your network slowing down. Yes, you turn on quality of service, you know, to prioritize traffic. But, you know, for an extra $100 a month, maybe you can get an extra 100 megabits per second up and down, uh, up and down uh, load speed uh, in order to, to smooth everything out. And again, this is one of those things people don't think about. You got your T1 line. Somebody five years ago uh, purchased the data service that you currently have. Has anybody actually looked at that contract in the last couple of years? What you might find out is you just keep getting renewed on that old contract and all you have to do is literally Call your data com comp call your data com company, say that you you want some new plan, and you may find out the new plan has three times as much bandwidth for half the cost. Now they kept charging you that old contract because you never decided to change the contract, right? So this is one of those things you have to be thinking about. Uh, the next thing you need to think about if you're thinking about uh, quality of service alternatives is also just a question why you have so much network traffic. Again, if you're looking at this, you're, you're listening to quality of service, you say that's something that I need, one of the things you may be asking yourself is why do you have so much network traffic that quality of service really matters? So things to think about is scheduling synchronization or updates. So one of the problems that we have nowadays is people go in uh, and, you know, technicians create automatic update routines or automatic backup routines. And sometimes they don't think about what time those routines are running at. You know, how many automatic update or backup or whatever synchronization routines do you have running at 10 a.m. in the morning? Right? And again, you go into many networks and you see this kind of crap happening. Why is the network slow? Well, because you have five computers backing up the carbonite at, you know, again, 11 a.m. in the morning. Why? Who the hell would do that? I don't know. It's what's happening, right? Um, so going, man, and one of the things you have to be thinking about is do you have all this traffic going on uh, that even if it needs to keep happening, doesn't need to happen at that time, right? If people are at office from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., you can start having all of these updates and all that stuff start firing at 6.01, or maybe give a little leeway and start at 7, right? You've got from 7 at night to 8 in the morning when nobody is in that office. That is 13 hours where you can blast the hell out of the network and nobody cares. So are your updates, are your synchronizations, are your things happening when it doesn't matter because nobody is in the office? Or is it for some reason they're firing when everybody is at the office? And again, you'd be surprised how often this happens. The next thing to think about is can you use things like caching appropriately? Especially in this modern uh, dumbass security world, right? A lot of people turn off caching. So caching is where you store a copy of data locally. Uh, so this is, a, this is a big one that can be seen uh, in things like Microsoft uh, Exchange Server and Outlook. Right, so Outlook... Um, actually, I haven't used the latest version of Outlook, but at least the old versions of Outlook, uh, they would they would have a little checkbox for whether to store data locally or not. Right. So if you stored data locally, what would happen uh, is when it connected to the Exchange server, all the contacts, all the calendars, all the email would be downloaded locally. And then whenever there were changes, there would just be small synchronization changes. Versus, on the other hand, if you did not check that box, all the data was stored on the Exchange server. When you opened up Outlook, all of that data was brought over, but it was for a single use. So every time you connected to the Exchange server, all that data needed to be brought over. Again, if you're dealing with 10, 20, 100 users, and they're not caching their, all that email information locally, that means you're hammering the hell out of your network probably for not a very good reason. Don't get me wrong. For something like that, there are security reasons. You may want to do it, uh, but for most people, the, there are not security reasons. So you need to be thinking about that, things like that with uh, with caching services. So whether it's with, like with, with Outlook and Exchange, whether it's offline um, offline storage for things like your My Documents, however else, uh, if you're having problems with your network, can you cache things locally so that only the 
the changes go back and forth and not everything else. That is one of the things that you need to be thinking about. And then overall, I guess the concept of optimizing network usage. When you look at your network, um, is the network being used in the way that you think the network should be being used? Again, you may have your own backup solution. You may be, you know, synchronizing all this stuff. And then you look and you find out that, you know, five or six people have Carbonite set up or Mosey set up on their computers. You're like, why the hell is why the hell is Mosey running? You know, we have our own internal backup system, um, and then you find out, you know, somebody installed this crap. You know, some user got the administrator uh, password at one point and installed Mosey on their computer. Again, now it's all backing up their entire two terabytes of of. Um, of, uh, of video files and you're running into issues. The final thing as far as a uh, quality of service alternatives go is, is kind of the ironic one when you really think about it. So back in the day, again, uh, back you know, 15 years ago or whatever, um, as, as I talked about, um, all the uh, the different services used to be siloed. So you had your computer services, you had your telephone services, you had your surveillance system services, you had your access control services. All of those things were siloed. When we talk about siloed, it means basically they worked off their own infrastructure. Uh, computers had servers and switches and routers and client computers. Uh, telephone systems had PBXs, um, um, Audix or, or or uh, voicemail systems uh, and, and telephones, um, one ten blocks and that kind of stuff. Your 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 security system had cameras and DVRs and all, yeah, blah blah blah, right? Um, and so the idea was it was completely separate. And so then everybody thought, hey, wouldn't it be a great idea again if we we connect all of these together so that we can use the same infrastructure? The problem is, is once they started using the same infrastructure, uh, a lot of times they realized that was a really bad idea, right? Because uh, you run into problems, like especially if you're dealing with like high definition uh, surveillance cameras. When you're dealing with five megabit uh, surveillance cameras or ten megabit surveillance cameras, they pump out a lot of data. They pump out a lot of data. So again, the problem is you connect 20 5 megabit um, uh, surveillance cameras onto your normal network and all of a sudden your normal network slows down to a crawl because uh, they are just pumping a constant stream of video. Uh, and so what ironically people started to do is they actually started to then build parallel networks. Everything is still using uh, TCP IP, everything is still using Ethernet, everything is still using switches and routers and the whole nine yards, but they actually separated the networks back out again. So now you have the computer network, and then you have the telephone system network, and then you have the surveillance system network, um, and then those are connected together with routers so that they can communicate with each other, but the network itself, you don't have to worry about one network getting overloaded and causing problems for the other one. So that's one of those things that's come up that can be very useful, especially again, if you deal with high level equipment, um, manage switches so that you can create multiple VLANs. So again, you have the voice VLAN, you have the computer VLAN, you have the surveillance VLAN, you have the, the access control VLAN. Um, and at least that way, you don't have to worry about um, the, the different protocols uh, beating the crap out of each other. As far as how to use quality of service, you're like, hey, quality of service is, is great. Uh, most of the time, uh, as far as when you're dealing with um, um, uh, operating systems, client operating systems, and that kind of thing. Quality of service many times is built in to the client operating system itself. Uh, if you want some interesting reading, uh, you can read about how quality of service is built into Windows 10 and how it was previously built into uh, other uh, versions of Windows. Um, and on the other hand, it is also built into networking equipment. So if you're looking at your router, if you're looking at any of your other networking equipment, um, they, they will have options for being able to turn on or turn turn off quality of service. Again, what your particular piece of networking equipment has, I don't know. There's, there's a zillion pieces of networking equipment out there now. Um, if this is something that you're interested in, basically understand that is an option that you can use that may or may not be built into the equipment that you're using. So if you think that it sounds like a really good idea, um, just take a look at the specs of the equipment that you either already own or that you are thinking of purchasing um, and see if there are any options there. That's really all there is to it. Um, as final thoughts go, you know, like I say, quality of service is a very good thing. Quality of service, hands down, is a very good thing. But I would argue, I would argue when I look at quality of service, is that this is something to get you over bumps. Again, you're always going to have users doing something asininely stupid. So this is something, 
This is something that you should use to keep your, your asininely stupid users from shutting down your network, causing problems, like I say, for voice over IP traffic. I would argue it should not be used um, as something that is absolutely required to keep the network running. Because the problem is, again, as I've talked about, quality of service doesn't actually increase bandwidth. It only, it only prioritizes traffic. So the issue is, is if you don't have a lot of bandwidth, uh, you continually add users. Those users start to use uh, more and more um, uh, bandwidth hungry protocols, then you still run into issues. Uh, again, if you've got a 10, 100 switch or whatever else, I would, I would much prefer up that to a gigabit switch. If that gigabit switch is being uh, almost entirely utilized, then that's where I would look at creating parallel networks. Again, quality of service should give you over humps in the road. It's not something that, that should be absolutely required because again, you know, <laughs> because that's the thing. If every if you're running your network at let's say twenty percent utilization or forty percent utilization most of the time, and then one of your users does something stupid like they're gonna do, that's gonna bring you up to ninety, maybe even hundred percent utilization. You're gonna hit that bump. If you have QoS, you're gonna ride through that bump for a little while, and then there's gonna be a whole bunch of screaming. Uh, but overall, it's gonna be okay. On the other hand, if, you, if you're running your network at like 80, 90% utilization all the time, and then you get your, your, your users just doing general stupid things, that is just going to beat the hell out of your network, and you're going to start to have all kinds of weird other issues. Again, like I say, with quality of service, you know... Oh, distrust and verify, as I say. It's like quality of service. It's just one of those things. Quality of service is like anything else. Quality of service is like a backup solution. Quality of service is like antivirus software. As in, frankly, if you screwed up, it, it, it tries to prevent your screw up from be, being coming catastrophic, right? You know, again, like I say, like if you're dealing with like a lot of the antivirus problems, if you're dealing with a lot of other security issues and, and, and basically the, these, these management solutions, they are there when there's already been a mistake. You, you haven't implemented group policies properly. You, you haven't done these other things properly. You haven't maintained the server properly and therefore something fails and it's not a catastrophe. QoS is not the same thing. Basically, it's there. So again, if, if all of your bandwidth gets used up for some reason, then everything doesn't come to a crashing halt. But it's not something that I would use day in, day out or like need. And, and that would be, that would be my argument for quality of service. Um, again, I will remind you guys, as far as other projects go, I do do a few other projects now. I've been trying to separate out my projects and the types of content that I create into different channels uh, so that people get a little less snotty. So if you haven't been over, Failed Normal is a channel that I, uh, I brought back from the dead. And if you like my philosophical type stuff, uh, go over to Failed Normal. Uh, over there, it's not necessarily technology topics. It's kind of life topics and philosophy topics and world travel topics and all that kind of stuff. Eli, uh, Computer Guy Live channel, that is my question and answer channel. So that's where I answer your guys' questions. I put out generally three videos a day there. And if you want a Skype meeting with me, just go to silicondiscourse.com uh, to get a Skype meeting with me. Um, just so you guys know, I do only allow scheduling 14 days in advance. And all of those days have been getting booked up. So um, if you want a meeting with me and you see all the days are booked up, all you have to do is come back in a day or two and new slots constantly open. And that's really it. Again, as I said before, sponsors make my life happy and keep all this going. So again, by clicking on the sponsor links below the video, that really does help me out. And again, do remember with my sponsors that I only expect uh, accept sponsors that I think will actually be useful for you guys. Um, you know, these aren't, I learned my lessons. <laughs> <laughs> does, that, does anybody remember the lesson from about two years ago when I took a sponsor that was not a technology sponsor? That went badly. <laughs> That went badly, right? So uh, so all my sponsors nowadays, I do make sure that they are technology sponsors and I do make sure that they are relevant for you guys. So again, spiceworks.com uh, offers that, that great online community. So if you need any help, you know, again, trying to try to troubleshoot problems or trying to, to figure out what product you should buy, go to, uh, to spiceworks.com. Schooly Mitchell, again, if you're looking to purchase telecom or datacom services, definitely take a look at them. Not only that, but as I was talking about in the in the video today. 
Um, you know, a lot of times you buy telecom and datacom services and nobody ever thinks about renegotiating the contract. And not, not like not like arguing about renegotiating the contract, but like simply just like, oh, yeah, nobody's looked at our contract in three years. Let's make sure we're actually getting the best deal. And so if you, you contact Schooley Mitchell, they can help you out with that. Um, and then finally, uh, what is it? Gilware Data Recovery. Again, if you're running any kind of computer repair shop, anything like that, and you need uh, high-level data recovery services, again... You know, you can use Recuva or whatever, and, and that's something that's very useful. But if you need to actually rip apart hard drives or any of that kind of stuff, um, believe me, you're not going to do that. I actually looked into that um, when I was doing the whole consulting thing. When I when I had the had the building and I had nine employees and all that, I looked at doing high-level data recovery uh, repair. Again, you know, actually swapping out platters and all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, <laughs> that costs a lot of money. I looked at it and I'm like, well, let's see, the clean room is going to cost this much money and all the hardware is going to cost this much money. So realistically, unless you plan to do a lot of that kind of data recovery, it is much better just to ship it out to somebody else and come up with a partnership program. So anyways, those are the thoughts for today. As always, I enjoyed teaching this class and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.